All right, so here we go. This is gonna be my commentary for today. Um, I'm probably gonna use my Saturdays of the show for either like a commentary or some kind of special that I have worked out. Uh, it'll just kind of vary depending on what's going through my head at the time. For today, of course, like I said, it's gonna be a, uh, a mid game with, uh, it's gonna be in the perspective of Kosamak who is one of my friends and actually one of my teammates on, on my uh, team, my fives team. He's currently above 2k elo and he's going to be playing against 28 Janna who went middle. And if you are familiar with what I was saying last show, 28 is one of those players that likes to play champions which are very unconventional, always goes for the middle lane and always does, a, well, from what I've seen, generally does a pretty good job at it as well. He's a top Han player, um, moved over to League of Legends, and decided to stick with League. So I'm going to try and keep my eye on him for the most part in this game. And so I'm not going to be like watching all the other players and what they're doing on the map. One of the reasons for that is because, A, I want to let you guys get an idea of like what one player does in a high-level match. A lot of times you'll watch commentaries and like the tournaments, and they're moving all around the map, and you don't get a lot of chance to just see what one player is doing without just w going and watching their stream. So that's one thing I want to do is be able to do a commentary on them, you know, because a lot of time players, they'll just like play and they don't say much. So I think this is a, a cool little series that you guys would enjoy. Also, another thing is because LOL Replay will miss their HP bar, so I can mouse over them, and it's kind of hard to commentate on what's going on in other lanes unless Mark himself was actually watching that other lane. So uh, let's take a look here. They are going to be starting at the Wolves here with Lee Sin and he'll be picking those up. I'm not sure if he's going to go Wolves and then race or oh no I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe just Cho'Gath's going to grab those and then go top and he'll grab the Wolves or sorry the race. Yeah okay that makes sense. Kosmak doing a good job just going to put some damage onto them with that AoE. Real real friend there. And possibly even pull this red buff. So it looks like he will go ahead and shoot his orb of deception right over the wall there to do some damage to it. And actually missing the second portion of that. Oh well. And he's saying Jenna has no flash, so apparently yeah, it looks like they actually found Janna doing something over there and she popped her flash so that should help out Mark a little bit in lane here um, Yeah, actually so not the best start for Chuet. He didn't want to go back and regenerate his health So he did have to use one health potion early on and that is going to help out Mark here in the lane somewhat so I guess Bad play by him or good job by the, by the teammates catching him doing whatever it was that he was doing And for the most part Ari is a, a very easy champion to to do well with uh, it does take a little bit to just kind of get the hang of her if you're not used to landing all of the skill shots the main thing is being able to use your Q like just like that um, to either farm a lot of minions all at once or to both farm and to harass at the same time one really cool thing is that her foxfire is another great harassing tool if you are close enough to an enemy champion, it will target them before a minion. So you can run up to get a last hit and at the same time have your Foxfire on. That'll be attacking an enemy champion. Let's say you want to, another cool trick is if you want to kill a minion like that and harass, try and position yourself, position yourself in between the minion and the enemy champion. And you can shoot out your Orb of Deception to both do harassment to them as well as pick up some... Uh, you know, some last hits for yourself onto the creeps. So it looks like First Blood does go to the vein down onto the bottom lane to Soraka. Soraka probably getting a little bit over aggressive against that lane as a, uh, a Sona and Vayne are quite strong as far as uh, trying to be aggressive against them are concerned. And this is good. They're already given the blue buff. This is a, the cool thing about having a non-mana jungler on your side is you can pick up an extremely early blue buff at only level 3. That's going to help him out considerably against the Janna. Jenna is actually a really good middle laner. She has the ability to do quite a bit of uh, poke and harass. Now that was actually a bad play by Chu8 getting in front of his minions. You never want to get in front of your minions against an RA as she'll just grab you with that charm. Been able to do quite a bit of damage. And then you'll notice he landed his order of deception as uh, quite a bit of harass there on top of that. So top lane did get ganked as Lee Sin came in there. Pretty good job for him on that. It's going to help out the top lane quite a bit. So far... Game is quite in the favor of blue team here. 
And once Janna gets a little bit higher level, it's hard to really push her out or harass her or anything like that because she just throws down the tornadoes and she can clear pretty much the whole creep wave just with a fully charged tornado. And there's not a whole lot that you can do to stop that. So it's just going to come down to Mark is going to have, or sorry, Cosmac here is going to have to just try and out farm Janna and that's going to be his, his main ticket to doing well. And I'm not sure what that charm was aimed at, but the cool thing about Ari is that you can generally put your lane up fairly well and then go gank. I think that it's going to be a little bit harder against Janna pushing, at least uh, as she does get some Doran's rings or whatnot. That's what I'm assuming that Chu8 will build into. Uh, possibly will build into a uh, Deathfire Grasp. I've seen some Janna's do that as well. As far as Ari is concerned, there's a couple of builds you can do on Ari. He could go for a, a bit of Spell Vamp to help him out. Of course, he doesn't have too aggressive of a lane. So he may not have to do that. He, he could possibly go straight for a Rylays to do some kiting and have a lot of HP. Or he can just go straight for the Death Cap for big damage. Now Aurelia is shifting over to the middle lane here to help out. I think she is the actual jungler, so she's just going to hold that lane for a second. Bottom lane doing a great job. Uh, again, getting another kill onto that Soraka. This time with the help of the Lee Sin. Now double kill on the bottom. This is a really bad start from what I can tell for the purple team as that Lee Sin is just doing work all over the map. They had a kill on their own on the bottom and I don't know if he helped out on that or not. Uh, and then he killed someone up top and then picked him up on bottom. So the only place he has not ganked is the middle lane here. Now you can see the Cho'Gath already ahead of that Pantheon. Now that Pantheon got behind, it's really hard to become, or sorry, to come back uh, for some champions, especially against someone like, like Cho'Gath whenever you get ganked up there and you fall behind. So I imagine he's quite far so he's only level four and so that pantheon is gonna just be pantheon is one of those champions you have to get ahead early or it's gonna be very difficult for you to do anything useful he he can fall off so hard and so a pantheon at level four i feel like he's just gonna be like a detriment to this game at this point um right now custom act seems to be doing a good job he's got 51 cs to janice 40 so is beating him quite heavily at this point and everything seems to be going perfectly uh, in this game so far. Now one thing I need to do here is add something here. Bam, there we go. Forgot about that. Had a little uh, overlay for, uh, for you guys so you wouldn't see who is winning or how much time is left, I mean. Okay. So let me just check out the bottom lanes here. They seem to be really aggressive on bottom. Every lane is winning as far as I can tell. Graves 23 to... Well, actually, that's interesting. Uh, oh, never mind. I was looking at it wrong. I was like, yeah, they're behind, but they should be ahead. And just looking at the wrong lane. And then Cho'Gath 39 to Pantheon's 24. So, yeah, so far, from what I can tell, I'd say blue team is definitely going to win this based on the lanes. When you lose every single lane... Uh, especially early on like this, it's just really hard to come back. I mean, it's 5-0 and at this point. So, really hard to come back from that. These guys are going to have to win some big dragon fight to even things up. If they can if they can pick up this next dragon, and I'm talking about purple team, and get a couple kills on top of that, I mean, there's stuff like that happens all the time. And there you go, that's what I was talking about with the uh, tornado pretty much farming everything. She has to auto attack each, uh, each front wave minion like once and then do her tornado and I think that pretty much clears it. So Janna is going to start using her tornado to push that down and then she will roam. I imagine that she either went back completely or did the blue buff right now. Uh, I could say she might have gone blue. Aurelia now coming down to gank this bottom lane. Could be bad for the Sona as she does get jumped onto. Soraka the only one here. Graves nowhere in sight to help us out so that is not going to be a successful gank as he was just too far back. And now Aurelia going to get her jungle stolen. Good thing about uh, seeing someone gank on the map as the enemy jungler, or as if you're the jungler, is that, okay, you see Aurelia on bottom, you know that's your perfect time to go steal all of the creeps on the other side of the jungle. And that's exactly what you see Lee Sin doing. So he's doing a great job of, of you know, playing that jungler role just as you would expect someone at a high level to do. Always taking advantage of every situation given. You need to always pay attention to, oh wow, that tornado almost knocked up uh, Mark. But the main thing is you always want to pay attention to where everybody is on the map and what is going to happen. So, uh, so via Aurelia trying to gank bottom, she basically gave away this entire jungle area to Lee Sin there. 
Uh, gonna lose a little bit of creeps here, but not much you can do. If you had to go back against a Janna, she's just gonna push the lane. Now that's curious, actually, Catalyst Protector, so I guess that Mark is gonna be going for a Rod of Ages, and that'll give him that tankiness and a little bit of ability power, but not the slow. So generally, I don't like that build on on Ari. Oh wow, Chu8 actually did roam to the bottom lane, so he pushed that bottom and decided to go down there and take that. So that's double kill there. Wow, really sexy push there for Chu8. That's kind of uh, what you have to do, though. I mean, the whole team is losing right now, and Chu8 knows that he has to do something to help his team come back. So he goes down bottom and picks up those two kills. That's going to help out quite considerably. Mark now using his ulti, picking up a kill onto Pantheon. As Pantheon is trying to make something happen here, and Aurelia will be able to escape. Does have her ult to her, help her up, and they just didn't have the cooldowns to make that happen. Now Power Gypsy dodging that tornado just barely. And a charm going to miss as well. Don't think it would have killed Chuate, though, as he is full health. Has two door ends, should be good to go. Ping going down on the blue buff as he does want to give that to Mark now. And he's going to have to just push out that one creep. Should be able to get that quite safely, actually. Now, I don't know where Aurelia is at, but you can tell she's probably frustrated that her creeps are gone. As uh, even Cho'Gath was up there munching on the minions. So that blue buff is, once again, going to help out quite a lot. And we still don't know where Janna is, so... She pushed the lane and could potentially be back buying some items after picking up those two kills on the bottom lane, which is most likely what he's going to be doing at this point. And he could also be uh, roaming, but I don't think he'd be top. Obviously, Cho'Gath is already gone, so it wouldn't make sense for him to do anything else. And there you go. Going to push this tower down while she's gone. Tower's already at half HP, so Mark's doing a great job of... Putting pressure onto that lane. Chuate having a hard time. Wow, already lost quite a considerable amount of his HP just from trying to come back to the lane there. Probably just did not see that uh, over deception coming in on him. And now bottom now is going to get ganked by Sorelia once again. She's putting a lot of pressure down there trying to make something happen. However, the Vayne is able to use his ulti to escape quite well. And Sona's just going to back off. Also using our ultimate to keep them off of her. Very low now probably, I assume anyways. I cannot see the health as Lee Sin does come in for the counter gang and this could be really bad Soraka now low going to go down and actually turns his attention to the Aurelia instead trying to pick her up Could this be the right decision? It looks like it will be as he goes down Soraka dies to the vein and now Chuei coming down bottom to try and make something happen Will get the kill there with the tornado and an ignite and now only one alive is Graves will get jumped onto by Mark using his Foxfire and wow, what a crazy back and forth fight, but overall, really, really bad for purple team, as that is a one for four exchange in favor of blue team. And now they will be picking up that dragon most likely, or possibly even taking the tower, or both. But yeah, just like Lee Sin said, number one bait. Purple got a little bit greedy there, not paying attention to where the enemies were on the map. All four came down, folded down just in time to... Uh, just make a really great play there overall. Good job by the Lee Sin as well. You saw that he, or he knew that Soraka was not going to get away. So he turned his attention to that Aurelia, knowing that that was the right thing to do in that situation. There we go. Mark's just going to sit here. And he thought he can go ahead and take out the tower, but the shield from Jenna actually kept it alive a little bit. And now he's in kind of a bad spot as he's only got three seconds left on his ulti. Will he be able to get away? Actually, he may not even have to use it as they just ran out of cooldowns on him. So he is safe from having to pop that. Tornado coming in. Probably would have hurt him a little bit. He doesn't want to leave the lane. He knows that he's got his catalyst. Uh, well, it's, well, he's got a little bit of ways before he levels up again, but uh, oh no, here comes the Pantheon, gonna be jumping in here, and Mark has his ulti up, luckily, we'll be able to escape, no problem, one more jump, and he's out of there, no problem, uh, but he is still on the chase, Pantheon needs to be careful though, as he could potentially get picked up by the Lee Sin here, and Cho'Gath, they are gonna be coming around onto these guys, no escape, as that is gonna be a feast, Cho'Gath now with four stacks of feast, and doing quite well in addition to that. Gonna be picking up a death cap as his first item. So he's gonna be extremely dangerous in team fights. And right now, 12 to 3. I just don't think this looks very good for purple. There's a ping there onto Soraka as she was uh, seen running around from the race. 
Lee Sin just gonna hang out here in the middle lane. They will probably take this tower down if they continue pushing as it only has about two hits left on it. Ping going down. They do want to take that Soraka down. If they decide to jump on her, she could fall quickly as she only has a Philosopher's Stone. So she's not very tanky at all right now other than just healing herself. And the red buff being given to the Vayne. Very good job. They are playing quite well as a team at this point. Cho'Gath also took the top tower, so now three towers to zero and a 12 to three lead. That is, uh, I don't know, that's pretty much the textbook definition of GG almost there. So uh, again, there could be the possibility of purple coming back if blue team decides to make like some crazy mistakes somewhere. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can see happening right here. And there it is, a dragon attempt coming in for the purple team, knowing that they need to get some uh, some advantage there. But Sona is going to get taken out as they try and stop this flash going over the wall. And Cosmac trying to get a charm off, not going to be anywhere near. Oh, nice grab there as Lee Sin picks up a kill. And that was such a crazy land. I don't even know how that, I mean, that was just straight up blind into the bush, picking up a kill there. And that was quite nice as that turns it into a one for two exchange. <laughs> Most likely will be picking up this dragon now if they decide to do so. I don't think that there's any way that purple could stop them. And looking in chat, looks like someone wants me to say hello to Sarah from Sweden because she doesn't believe it's live. Okay, sure. I'll do that for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, moving up here to look at Cho'Gath as he is just munching on the tower. And this is looking really bad. They're going to need to take some towers if they need if, if they want to come back from this. As each tower gives a considerable amount of XP and global gold to the entire team. Um, not only that, but the map control is, is a huge deal. Being able to uh, not even having to be in your lane because your creeps are pushing past. So you can uh, you can focus your attention in other areas. Also, how it's, they act, you know creeps pushing past towers act kind of like a ward in a sense. And now Pantheon trying to push that tower down puts himself in a bad spot. No way he's going to get away from that. Mark picking up the kill for sure. 4-0 with three assists. And I don't know, man. This uh, this game is is pretty nasty so far. So far, Mark has done a great job farming as well. 121 creep score to Jana's 103. Janna not doing too bad considering the situation, however. Uh, although, you know, Janna doesn't have too hard of a time. But here we go. Looks like some people are going to get caught here. Soraka going to get exhausted as Vayne and Sona on the chase. Will she make it out alive? I don't know. It's really close. Janna's shield tries to save her, but it's not enough as a tumble picks her up with one last auto attack. Now Chuade on the run as well. Does get grabbed by the Lee Sin. Ultimate going down to try and push him away. Does not get knocked up by Cho'Gath. And will just barely scrape his way out of there. This is uh, very crazy right now. So I had to give this game to probably Lee Sin as he... Oh my goodness. Look at that damage coming down as Mark jumps over the wall to go for that Pantheon. Now with no more jumps. He's going to have to be careful as Aurelia will jump on him picking up the kill. And if they don't get anything else out of this, that might not be a good dive. But if they can take out either Janna or Aurelia, that'll be good. But for so far, if this Sony goes down to a banana, then that could be... Oh, one last heal actually keeping him alive. Now Soraka got baited for the kill as well as Graves. And that's going to be a 3 for 1. Nice little bait past the towers. And they're just going to walk out of there quite safely as the creeps are tanking that for them. Well played, guys. Yeah. Sona living there by the just oh man just by hair and that's a lot of damage there as the uh, the damage okay she may have used her deathfire grass because I just noticed like a big chunk of his life going down oh man look at that damage as he goes in with a tornado and tears up Cho'Gath Cho'Gath gonna be losing a couple stacks of feast now only at three flash being messed up by the Lee Sin will he get it no he's so slowed right now. Oh no! He gets his ward down just in time before he loses HP at less than 100 health. Just barely getting away. Holy crap, they had no... Oh man, that was that was so clutch right there by that Lee Sin. And uh, that the mobility of Lee Sin, that's just, that's just where it all comes to play. Mark gonna have to be careful here as he does kind of get caught. But nice job picking up 2-8 there. 
And that is going to be another one for him as he will be building into a Riley's. Soraka not getting away from this one as she tries to bait into an Aurelia. Could be a good turnaround for them though. They will need to be careful if he can get a nice charm off onto the Aurelia that should help Sona get away. Does not want to lose that Oracles but will get stomped on by Pantheon as he stuns her and takes out that Oracle. So that's actually not a good fight for them at all. Now Kostomak trying to run away, gonna get slowed by the Aurelia and she does not want to push past into that tower as here comes two of their allies. And this guy's just playing real crazy right now. Not a good time to get cocky as there is, like I said, a small possibility that purple could come back if they make a lot of bad plays. Soraka now just running way too slow. Did not get back to base in time and gets picked up so fast. Oh no, but that tornado from Chu A doing massive damage on Ari. Had no idea that was going to happen. Anger kill, as he says. And not not smart running into that. Sometimes when it, that's, uh, I think, one thing that can be said for a Janna is that. People underestimate the damage that she can do if she's actually built like a carry. Janna is one of the best supports in the game with absolutely no farm at all. So when you give her some farm, she can actually do some work. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually impressive. And there we go, a little bit of engage going to be happening here. As the Vayne does want to steal that red buff, she does take it. But now wanting to chase in here, Pantheon going to be jumping in. Wants to get a kill onto this Vayne. She's very low. Will she go down? Getting slowed now. Exhaust not going to save her as she dies to the Aurelia. Picking up that blue. And once again, that uh, jump over the wall to the ward almost helps him escape. But Chuei does have his flash up. Picks up the kill there. And now going to be turning their attention to the Cho'Gath. Everybody's just getting caught out of hand here. Making lots of mistakes. Chuei carrying like a boss right now. Doing a great job. Let's take a look at this. Well, actually, more fights coming in as uh, Ari now wants to get in here and make something happen. But realizes that's a bad idea. Jumps as far away from that battle as he can. All five of them up now. A 0-4 to four exchange. This is looking terrible as they might just pick up this Baron at this point. Will he be able to steal this? Actually, look at 2A's health. Oh, nice heal coming in. Going to help them out. Oh, my goodness. That order deception over the wall just might be able to pick some of them up. They're going to have to be very careful here as Purple Team does have to worry about... Oh my god, that over deception damage. These guys are going to get destroyed now by Baron. Baron could potentially pick up one of them. They're going to have to run out of there. They're going to lose all of their uh, health. Oh no, yeah, here comes Vayne with the chase using his ultimate. Going to take out the Soraka. Now going to use his roll. Will he pick up another kill? No, actually he does not as Ari goes down. Oh well. <laughs> Vayne actually killed one in the bush. I didn't even have the vision of that, really. That was just like a split-second auto attack. And now going to pick up the Aurelia as she tries to make it back to base. Probably should have teleported back from right there. And that is a killing spree for the Vayne after she comes back. Terrible play by Purple as they almost had a chance to come back there, but left the Ari up. Ari was able to do big AoE damage to everybody with her Orb of Deception, and that cleaned everybody up there. That was uh, that was just terrible. That's gonna give the Baron two blue team. Let's take a look at Chuei already at seven kills. He's he's pretty much holding the team together right now. And there it is, the Baron. Let's see, Janna was not able to steal it, and they're just gonna run back to base. Probably heal up, buy a couple items if necessary. I don't know what this rock is trying to do. Just sitting here. Maybe baiting. I don't know. I bet you Aurelia is... It? No? Aurelia is down on bottom. So, okay. It's just a Pantheon. As they are not completely grouped up here. Flash going in. Pantheon trying to get away. And now there's the chase. Vayne coming in. Real strong. Aria around the way. Going to get knocked back by the Janna. And has to escape away from that Pantheon. Pantheon is going to get melted here if he stays around too long. But a nice shield from Janna keeps him alive just long enough. And what the heck? That ultimate did not stun anyone. I don't know why. It looked like it hit them. I don't know if that's a law replay bug or just another law bug that I'm not aware of. Wow, that heal is going to bait out Lee. No, Leeson does get the kill with this kick. I thought he would. Oh, he ran back into the Graves buckshot. Just barely nicked him on the face. And he goes down. That was not expected at all. I don't think he expected that in the least. Oh man, that was crazy. These guys are playing wild right now. 
Cho'Gath at this point with a lot of kills. Vayne carrying very heavily. Yeah, 150 CS for him. And that's going to be the tower going down on purple side as they are still, uh, still unable to take any towers of their own. Just at a massive disadvantage right now. I could only imagine if I were able to take a look at the uh, the gold difference that you can see in observer mode. I imagine it would probably be above 5k right now based on the tower advantages. Uh, they've got all the way down the middle to the inhibitor. Super creep is going to be spawning in that lane, which is going to make it so much more difficult. Now they're taking the actual global buffs. Their farm is so much higher. Nobody has anywhere near what they have here. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so Jenna just barely has a little more than Vayne, who is the, uh, the lowest of the carries here. Aurelia does have more farm than Lee Sin, but Lee Sin has been ganking quite heavily the entire game. Again, I have to give it to Lee Sin. He ganked on bottom, on top, and then on bottom again, just completely destroying those lanes. And Cosmac had no problem in his lane. Oh my god, look at that damage going out. Is he going to be able to take this guy out if he had any night? Which he does not. That might have actually been a kill. And that was just some crazy deeps there. Rod of Ages plus a Blasting Wand, almost building into his full build. He's going to be very tanky once that's fully set up. Already at 2600 HP, it's going to be very hard for them to take him down, as you've noticed from most of the game. He won't have necessarily as much damage as if he had went straight for Riley's into a Death Cap, but what he's doing this time is just going for more of a tank sustain build. And that's okay, because for a champion like Ari, she's actually got very low cooldowns. And so she's got the ability to just stay in a fight and continue using those abilities. And eventually it works out. Whereas if you try to go in with full AP build on her, sure you're going to be doing a lot more damage. But you also have the potential to completely get destroyed. And in the end, not do as much damage because, well, you know. Two spells is better than one, regardless of the fact that you have more AP. Right now, she's already got almost, tw almost like you know, twice as much damage than the base, anyways, from her scalings. At least on the orb deception. And that is looking good. Yeah, pretty much almost a one. Yeah, almost, almost the exact uh, same on the charm, but charm is not really damage dealer. That's more for the taunt, and spirit rush is more for positioning, but does quite a bit of damage actually, especially since it can hit three people three times. Over deception and foxfire are her main sources of damage. Let's take a look. Five second cooldown. She doesn't even have any cooldown reduction. Let's, does she have a blue? Yeah, blue buff. Okay. 3.8 on Foxfire. Yeah, like I said, really low cooldowns on Ari. So having that Hextech Revolver plus 2700 HP is going to be really difficult for them to deal with. Look at that Aurelia taking big, big hits there. Sona almost going down to the ultimate from the Graves. But his ultimate now down will not allow them to... Uh, do any more AoE bursts other than just tornadoes from the Janna and oh my god here it is There is the dive as a big shield just barely saves graves But not before the Lee Sin comes in for the kill now a lot of orbs deception coming here hitting three targets And that is gonna help them take out that Pantheon very quickly tower going down for the top lane only two three remaining Sorry, yeah now two as the Cho'Gath is able to take out Soraka there right by the tower. They'll take out the last inhibitor. And I think this is probably GG. I don't see any way for them to come back. Like I said at the very beginning, I, I felt like this is where it was going to go after watching uh, the bottom lane die and everybody falling behind on farm. In a game like League of Legends, especially at high levels, you, you, have, to, you have to have at least one or two lanes winning or staying neutral even otherwise you're gonna fall behind like this so anyways guys hopefully enjoyed uh the view of ra versus 2h janamid who actually did a really good job and will go down right here. oh my god that's almost a hill bait there 
Uh, but yeah, it did a really good job, I have to say. Just wasn't enough to carry the team in this case. Regardless of how good you are, you are going to lose some games sometimes. It's more about just winning the, you know, winning out more often than not. I have to say he did a great job of roaming around and picking up kills throughout the map. It just, uh, it just came down to the fact that, you know, they've got a vein get vein fed early she's definitely gonna out carry at graves always late game oh my gosh okay uh already did pick up a kill there and that's gonna be gg hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you're watching on youtube please help me out push that like button and uh also be sure to check out my show which i do tuesdays through saturdays on justin tv that uh is at 3 p.m pacific time so that's it